Are we good? Let's clap. My name is Ander Makai, and I'm a man. I'm a South African man, an African man. But what does this actually mean? In a world and a society unraveling at the seams of tackling gender-based violence, in a time when we were trying to redefine our identity, navigating our trauma. Join me on my journey as I try to find out what makes a man. I'm seeking an understanding beyond shocking headlines of gender-based violence with people who have lived their own journey. Women have been killed as a result of gender-based violence. No, they need to know we are fighting for our rights. We are fighting for them also. What if a man gets raped on the leaf field? One in five South African women have experienced physical violence by a partner. They are tired. They are killing us. Gender rights activist Andile Kaleshiwe has uh, formally laid a rape charge against her estranged father. I didn't do it for all these years because you're afraid of the system. <laughs> Hey boy, obviously you don't know me now, but um, I'm Ayanda, your father. I figured I should do this diary entry for you before I even meet you. I think me and your mother are very nervous. Everyone's nervous about your arrival. Um, apparently you could arrive any minute now, so... I want you to know that I want to be there. Every step of the way, I want to be there for you. I'm not saying I'll be perfect. Know that I love you. Know that I care for you. Know that I will do anything in my power to protect you and to show you love. We named you Lord because we turned on it for you, you know we're like. And don't you ever forget that. Guys, I've just arrived at the hospital. Uh, oh, I'm trying to rush. I'm about to be a father. Uh, I'm shaking. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to go into, into the hospital yet. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Congratulations, madam. I remember when I first moved to Joburg, coming from a small town in Eastern Cape. I came here and I just saw everything being fast, tall buildings. Everyone is, is looking out for themselves, you know, you never know who are your real friends, who are not your real friends. And I don't come from a town like that. I come from a town where everyone knows everyone. I gave in to the pressures of the city. I found myself parting more than I should have. I found myself indulging in drugs, indulging in the culture of multiple women. And at that time, money was coming in. You know, I got excited. I'd never experienced a life like this. And now I've got a son. I mean, I, I didn't grow up with my father. And because of that, I'm worried with how I'm gonna raise my son. What kind of man am I? going to portray to him to look to look up to. Yes, we, we, gender-based violence is, is being led by men. How am I going to ensure that my child doesn't grow up to be that man? Yo, you know this little He's the youngest uh, radio host in South Africa right now. I love you guys. Follow me on uncle.vino on Instagram. What better way to start my journey in trying to understand what it means to be a man than speaking to a young man who is the quintessential cool kid of South Africa. Cover them swanko, cover the coolness, cover alice. They want to mind your eyes, they are kala. Uncle Vinny, he's the ultimate club hype man with more influence amongst the youth than most politicians. He calls himself the president of the youth. I 
I'm curious to know how he managed to navigate growing up in one of the toughest neighborhoods in Johannesburg and became a successful entertainer at such a young age. Um, how was it for you specifically growing up here? Were you, were you bullied or anything like that? How, how was that for you? No, bullying happens everywhere. I mean, being bullied, maybe I was bullied in high school because of the way I speak. I was going into a school where it was like just suburban kids mostly. You know how they perceive, like when you come from the hood, they think you're gonna steal. What's good, boy? They think you're gonna steal, they think you're gonna do the weirdest stuff. What's good? Okay, so talking about bullying, right? What is your take on gender based violence? With GBV, I just feel like GBV is, is the most wrong thing on earth to do. You can't scar another person because maybe you're feeling some type of way. So people who stab girls, people who bend them or whatever, I just feel like a sentence more, less than 20 years in jail is nothing. Me personally, if you get physical with the honey, I, like, I don't look at you the same because hey, there's a day she's going to make you that angry and you're going to kill her because you're not thinking. Like in South Africa, we're dealing with so many issues. We have so many issues that we have to address, like, but the big elephant in the room is just that this one is gonna base violence. So you never know. You think it's happening in the black community, you don't know what's happening on the other communities. You get what I'm saying? If you look at all the way around, look at our history, it's always war, 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 war. And people, the only language that they understand sometimes is fear. I feel like the whole men are trash culture and all yeah. that kind of stuff kind of puts us in a corner where whatever we say or do to a woman yeah. will come across as guilty of something. Like for example, yeah. if you and I are standing here and a girl walks past and I go, don't do this, yeah. look at that girl, you know? How do you react to your friends when they do that? How do you, how should we treat it? I think there's a difference between catcalling a woman and there's a difference between you admiring a woman. There's also the energy, you can feel it. Well, Uncle Vinny has a strong sense of values when it comes to gender-based violence, you know, and respecting women. And I think I want to raise my son to treat women with the same respect. But when he does mention the whole aspect of men killing women, I can't help but just think about the closest woman in my life, my mom. So I'm going to pay her a visit and hear her take, you know, when it comes to this kind of topic. Coming up after the break, I have a difficult but much needed conversation with my mother. The first birthday, I killed a boy and God, I get a cool, a cool, a cool, a warm dollar. Go, go, get, go, go, as a creature. Oh, Ayanda, I need call. What twenty week? Don't forget twenty week in the name in exit. And I need call. I want to know. I got been to Basan. They be excited. Oh, Uva, Ubana. Uti Ayanda go le pro. That finish in Dubana yo. Tinendo. Then say in the woman bag. Don't bring on it. Don't need. What makes Indota? 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 Indota, Tina. Silindele, Ogokuba, Ibe, Mutu, or responsible. We go to a Cayenne, a Bantu in about around Yena. Ufanele, Indogobana, Abando, my finish in Dogobana, but safe. So at what point do Colin Guam can go? We are a click along the corner by Mantibung, we are going to get a lot of that. <laughs> hey, what kind of Where now? 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 Where I think economic pressure upon and that vele dam chong and jengom to okoy financially as a financial support, but on geko as la relationship yonyana no tata. I think ike aya ike ike ndago fail la mshamb kuba 
Banda baning abano nai. Nda focusa cum nai. Clambimna. The liba logo guba wen in a impact. Now go and turn on dana or in quen. Think Ayon and Dobin get a full of boza yon is. Because I, I feel, when I look back, I feel like I did exactly what Utata did. By having Utana. And then no ambe, we are going. And then the ambe, and go and have another relation. I did exactly what Utata did. Yes. Mna Utata wakoke, mna ndimazi ukuba unenye uni relationship. Sele wenu ukabilu nyaka. Because in a way, it, it makes me feel like I failed you. I saw Bakuban to Kukuli seal, the expecta in the Gokubana, your own windows are yenza, is a bind their rights. With with the China based violence up in South Africa and Goku, a bonamus is Simo Sayanjan. How do you feel? What's your, what's your view? In the ending, I eat you, your Gokubana, a bandabagotata must stop. Mm -hmm. Stop killing women. Kuba kwa nele. Every day. Kuba lawa umdo pinguleyo. No kwa nele. Mm. Siyanganda. Mauke ubu uye la mteto. Wendamu. Wendamu. Mm. Uba ngabu uye mshambi. Kuke kutuwe nje mnye uka nye babini. Kwa announce ne date mshambi. Sive. Siyazi, ukubalo wawa yebulele ubani. Ukatiu, konyiu. Ayi, sobe pinde enza yekelendo. Ubanga bangabu ya londo. I understand my mother's feelings towards GBV and why I should want a death penalty for perpetrators. But I wonder if this is a solution that is best for us, fighting violence with violence. Should we need the death penalty as a deterrent to stop gender-based violence? I know ba kwenye kwebo. Hearing my mother admitting to her own mistakes was uncomfortable. You know, especially because she made it feel like she's to blame. I mean, growing up, she gave me all the love I needed. You know, and none of us are perfect. I mean, she made it clear by pointing out that in Dinomtan outside of the wedlock. You know, but instead, what I need to do is focus on taking accountability and responsibility in this male and create a healthy environment for my son. I mean, I was worried when she, or I guess, when she told me that she was worried about me wearing wigs and dresses, I did wonder whether how would she have reacted if I was gender fluid or gay? And whether or not me wearing a wig at that age doesn't really define whether I'm a man or not. I mean, so I'm down to Fundin, you know? For sure I know that she's not homophobic or anything like that. Um, and that she truly would have supported me, um, regardless of my gender or my sexual orientation. But it makes me wonder, and it makes me realize how important it is. For Rukbana, for Rumdanam, I create a very comfortable environment for him to express himself freely, you know, without any judgment. So yeah, I'm going to be weak in a nini na. Yeah, um... You know, growing up at home in a loving and supportive environment, it really helped in, in making sure that in the Puman disaster, you know, getting a proper sense of self. But my school did play a, a huge part of, you know, me understanding my manhood. And since I'm in town, I decided, you know, let me go past there and, and have a chat with one of the students, Umninao Mayeso, who has written a beautiful. Um, essay about gender-based violence and the pressures um, of being a young man. Going to an all-boys school had its own challenges. The pressures of a certain type of masculinity. You are more of a man if you played rugby than did drama. You were supposedly more of a man if you were seen or known to have more or multiple women. But one thing remains engraved in my heart since I left the school. I'm a great the chance that made us believe in ourselves and our dreams. The camaraderie it created to set path to be a committed young man with a positive mindset.
I'll first ask you, what do you think is a man? What's, what makes a man? Um, for me, a man is someone who can stand up for what he believes in. So a man simply is someone who is himself, is comfortable with who he is, and then portrays that to the, to the rest of the world and does not feel pressured into being something other than who he is. Growing up, I was very close with my sister and we were treated as equals. But as we started growing up, things started changing. Different things were expected of me, different things were expected of her. And do you think the, the expectations that came as you guys grew, uh, things that were expected from you versus her, it, it was, was it based on gender roles and, and that kind of space or what? Yeah, it was definitely based on gender because she's sometimes expected to cook more than me, for example, but you know, we are both in the same position. So I do try to assist in the chores, even though I'm not told, but to assist her, you know, um, because I feel like it's important for me to do my bit as well in the household. And not just talk about equality, but actually like live that equality within my own life. Do you think that these expectations kind of, how did it affect your relationship with your sister? We struggle to relate to each other at some point because she's going through uh, different things, I'm going through different things. The relationship was tested in, in that respect. So I don't see myself as better than my sister because I'm male or I don't see her as better than me. Um, we both have a mutual respect and a, and a deep appreciation of our differences. Um, I don't know, so, so Lugil, have you gone to the mountain? No, I'm going this December. You're going this December? Yeah. What are, you, what are your expectations? I think it's going to be a challenge, but also I, I'm looking forward because I feel like I'm going to learn so much more about my own culture, my own family. And then I'm going to learn more to be prepared for the role that I'm going to take up next um, as a man. Mm. Because I feel like um, in Western society, being a man, it's just a matter of reaching the age of majority. Mm. Versus in our culture, it's something you have to earn. So I'm looking forward to, having, to earning um, the title and learning the responsibility that comes with manhood. How does that affect how you think now about gender roles? G gender roles are, are, are defined for us, really. So these are societal expectations. I want to construct my own role in terms of what I want to fulfill. Because for me, a man is not, for example, someone who's strong in the conventional sense or whatever. For me, a man is someone who's helpful in the household, someone who takes charge, who leads, but not necessarily by always being at the front. So it's important for me to define myself um, for myself and then expressing that um, in my family. I, I was really, I'm really fascinated by the, the way you think. Um, you know, I don't think when I was in matric, or at the time where I was in matric, um, I was thinking from this perspective. How do you think these gender roles play into the issue of GBV in South Africa? For me, being in this um, all, all boys school um, masculine space, masculinity is quite normal in and of itself. It's not a problem. I think what causes a problem is when people feel like they have to compensate for a lack of masculinity. So they feel like they have to resort to violence to take back their power mm. or whatever. It's not actually too much masculinity, it's too little of that masculinity and being comfortable with yourself. It's not only males, you know, who are part of the problem, it's the whole society and, and how we interact with, with each other as society. Wow. Our upbringing and environment definitely shape and mold us to be the men and people we are today. You can't get under us! You can't get under us! And as Ninawa mentioned, the gender roles between boys and girls forced by society may be part of the problem. You never get around us! You never get around us! GBV is not a male problem or a woman problem. It's a human problem. And finance has been standing in order to solve or eradicate it. And we too powerful! And we too powerful! I can't ignore the fact that statistics prove that, you know, most perpetrators are male. Makes me wonder, how can we be better men? Better people? It's clear this topic is even more complex than I thought. So we need to speak to more people. So join me in the next episode where I chat to Big Zulu, Andy Lechalisiwe, and Professor Langa as they share their personal journeys, healing our wounds and eradicating generational inherited trauma and pain. We need a reset. Is this my main character?